Oh gosh, everything is so slippery. The one piece of advice I would give to someone who's looking to buy a camera bag is to try as many different camera bags as you can. Go into your camera store, go to their bag wall, check out all the bags they have, check out the features, check out the straps, the buckles, all the little things to see what it is that you like most in a camera bag. But if you don't have a camera bag store near you, try to find other photographers and see how they're using their camera bags. Ask them how they've set it up. Ask them what they like most about their camera bag. But if you still can't do that, there is one bag that I think is the perfect camera bag, but with one major flaw. And we're going to talk about it. Now to not slip getting out of here. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> now we actually have to go back over this massive hunk of ice. Watch this. We have to get back over that, back around all of that. And this was, this was your idea, sir. I almost died because look at this but it's okay because we've got a nice solid camera bag to keep all of our gear nice and safe I just don't want to drop the camera that's all I think I think the best is yeah just go on your stomach shimmy right over this is how the pros do it watch <laughs> no chance of falling whatsoever I'm safe. <laughs> that's how you do it. There you go. Check, check this out. Just check this out. Look at this crazy, that's all ice frozen on a gate. It's days like this that you need a good camera bag. No doubt. Right? Yeah, that's the main thing we need. Yeah. But seriously, on a day like today, when you're walking on crazy ice like that, the last thing you want to do is drop your camera bag. So Rich has a brevity bag. Uh, Justin, what are you using there? Uh, lower Pro. Do you know what model? No, okay. <laughs> and I'm using the Shimoda Action X30, which is the bag that I want to talk about today. But for the last 10 years, I didn't use a camera bag at all. I just used a hiking bag because that's what I had with me. And I would just put like a padded insert or something inside my camera bag. And that was good enough. But ever since I started doing more photo specific outings, I thought, you know, I need to have a dedicated camera bag. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the Action X30 and why I think it's the perfect camera bag. Almost, almost perfect. You see this? This is a camera cube. So this is what I used to use to carry around all my camera gear. It's basically just a padded divider and this is the Peak Design one. You can get cheaper ones for, I don't know, as low as 20 bucks. In this case, this is like an Amazon, it's like an Amazon special with a bunch of padded dividers. And I would take that, put my camera gear inside one of these cubes and then put that cube inside one of my regular hiking backpacks. And that was kind of the best of both worlds where you would be able to keep your camera gear safe, but then you get a really nice backpack with really nice functionality with amazing pads because we all know that, you know, you look at a company like Osprey or Mystery Ranch, which is what this is, and they're kind of on the leading edge of backpack technology. But I quickly realized that using a hiking bag was slowing me down. And so for the last year, <laughs> I've been using this bag, which is the Shimoda Action X30. It kind of takes everything that I love about these hiking bags. Obviously, you don't need a camera cube anymore. Now that said, I use this for everything. I've used this to shoot weddings for a full day. I've used this on kind of downtown Toronto city adventures, but then I also use it when I go outdoors because I can carry all of my camera gear plus all of my first aid equipment or things that I need in case I get wet. And if you take a look at what's inside this bag, I use the top compartment to kind of carry all that extra stuff. Because as you'll notice, it's kind of this roll top style bag. It's not, it's not quite a messenger bag. It's not quite a hiking bag, but it feels like it's a little bit somewhere in between, which I love because you can get this roll top design, which allows you to just stuff an insane amount of extra gear in there. I was really hesitant at first about whether or not I would use the roll top, but the nice thing is that they actually have a zipper compartment right here, which 
accesses the same compartment. So I can pull up my sunglasses or I can pull up my first aid kit or whatever it is that I'm storing in the top. So in terms of style, this is a five out of five bag for me. It might not fit you. Maybe you're someone who's more into the minimalist peak design aesthetic, or you want something that's more traditional like a low pro or a Peter McKinnon bag. But for me, easily a four and a half or five out of five. Now, when it comes to capacity, we're talking a 30 liter bag and it has kind of three main compartments. Let's just jump into the front and I'm gonna kind of point out something that I'm maybe not so crazy about with this bag. Um, it has front buckles, which I absolutely love, but then the zipper for this whole front compartment, that's it. That it's just that kind of quarter zipper. It doesn't go all the way. And the problem is if you're trying to get something that's way down at the bottom, it can be a little bit tricky. Now, if you flip the bag over, that's where we get to the main compartment, which is actually really well designed. So when you open it, it flips to the side. So unlike some camera bags where they flip down, which takes up a ton of space, this bag, you can kind of throw it down on the subway, or maybe you don't have a lot of space because you're in a canoe. You can flip it to the side and you have access to everything. Now I've got this fit out with the mirrorless core unit and you can get various different units for whatever you want to fit out. But I also have an extra core unit and this is kind of their smaller one. I'll, I'll link what it is in the description. So I can take this plus that unit and basically fit out the whole bag with just camera gear if I don't wanna carry clothes or extras with me. One thing I've also done is I've flipped this sideways and put it in the top. So if I zip this back up, if you didn't wanna use the roll top, you could actually take all of that stuff out, stick in this core unit, and now all of a sudden you can put a drone, lenses, or whatever you want in the top, and it gives you that extra level of padding and protection. This is a 30 liter bag, but when you count the ability to overstuff or overload the top of the bag, all of a sudden you're adding seven more liters and you're looking at a 37 liter bag, which puts it in a similar category as the Peter McKinnon Travel, the 35 liter bag, the big one. Now, if you want, you'll notice I've also got the tripod mounted on the side, and that's because there's a combination tripod, water bottle holder slash pocket. So if you look at this, is a zipper, which if you wanted to, you could throw extra stuff in there. Like right now, there's there's an extra one of these water bottle holder slash all-in-one utility fold-out pouches. And of course, if you don't wanna use it, you can just use that as a regular pocket. Some added things that are not showing with this bag right now is the included waistband. Now, personally, unless you're carrying 30, 40 plus pounds, I don't think you need a waistband, but it's nice they include it it is an expensive bag, so it's kind of something that I would expect to be included. Now, one thing mine didn't come with, it didn't come with a rain cover, which is okay because we're gonna talk about durability in a, min in a minute. But before we get there, one more point about the functionality is the straps. I think the straps are probably one of the weaker points of this bag, which is a little bit disappointing for something that is supposed to be a hiking and outdoor bag. What I would love to see is you can notice how I'm using the Peak Design clip capture clip. I'm also using it on my other bag, but look at the difference here. So here I've been able to attach it to the webbing. So when I flip it around, I still have all the padding that's right up against my, wherever the padding is. On the Shimoda, the way they tell you to do the peak design clip is to go around the strap. So it's actually sitting right against your, your body, which is something that a lot of camera bags that's, that's the only option. There's not really anything there to attach it to. And so one thing I would love to see Shimoda do, as well as every camera bag manufacturer, just standardize, put a one inch strip or a one and a half inch strip of webbing. It would just solve the problem of attaching one of these and make it so much more comfortable for everyone who wears the bag. On the topic of straps, one of the things you'll see with this is that I'm using the woman's strap. And the woman's strap uses the spacer mesh, which if you compare that to the men's strap, Strap. The men's strap uses this, I don't know, it's like a high density, I don't know what it is. I think it's the same material that's on the back panel here, which I love way better. So I've got a sample of this 3D spacer mesh, which which it's fine, like it's kind of a tried and true fabric that's used on a ton of camera bags. But if you check out this bag, so this is probably one of my bags I've used the most, and I don't know if you can see it, but the back panel is kind of pilled. Over time from rubbing up against my back, 
The straps will get caught on Velcro, on fabric, on branches, on things when you set it down, and it doesn't look as nice as it did when you first bought it. At uh, Profusion this year, I actually got to talk to Peter, who's one of the co-founders at Shimoda, and I let him know this. I said, hey, whatever you're doing with the men's strap, just, just take that, put it on the woman's strap, and just make, make the best of both worlds. Like, you don't need to make two different straps. That's probably my one weakness with the functionality of the straps. Durability-wise, this bag is great. I would give it a four out of five, no problem. It's using kind of this ripstop coated laminated fabric, whatever it's called, I'm not sure, which inherently makes the bag water resistant. Resistant, I'm not gonna say waterproof because in order to be waterproof, it has to be completely sealed like a dry sack. And this bag, yes, it has waterproof fabric. It has waterproof zippers. So they're heavy. They're a little bit heavier than regular fabric, which makes the bag weigh in at I think around three, 3.7 pounds without the core units. With the core units that I have, it's about a pound extra. So it's about 4.8 pounds, which when you compare that to the Peter McKinnon bag, the 35 liter bag, that's a whole extra pound. So that's 5.75 pounds. So weight to functionality wise, you're gonna get more with the Shimoda. So it's gonna be a lighter bag and you're pretty much gonna be able to carry the same amount of capacity. And then if you were to compare it to something like the Peak Design 30 liter bag, I mentioned that's kind of a minimalist or a slick bag where it doesn't have any of the extra buckles, the pull tabs, the webbing, all those little things are fully emitted from that bag to make it weigh as light as possible. And if I have the number correctly, the Peak Design 30 liter bag weighs 3.17 pounds. So a little bit lighter, but really when you look at everything you're getting, the water bottle pouches, the straps, you're getting a lot more with the Shimoda Action X30. Durability wise, four out of five. I think maybe if it was a little bit lighter, I'd give it a five out of five, or if it was just fully waterproof, which I don't think there are any camera bags that are fully waterproof, unless you go with a full on dry sack, then happily throw that into the river. All right now for comfort. I think this is a touchy subject because it really depends on how much you're carrying. I carry between 23 and 25 pounds fully loaded out with all of the extras on the top that you see, all of my extra layers, a few winter layers, and the tripod. If I take that off, I can go well below 20 pounds. Where I think this bag struggles is the straps. I already talked about how I'm not super crazy about the mesh, which again, if you go to the men's strap, you can fix, but the men's strap, <laughs> has these extra pockets, which are designed for your cell phone or maybe like a GPS unit. I personally think these straps are overbuilt. There's too much to them and they could take the women's strap and the men's strap, combine them together and kind of make the best of both worlds. If and when they make a V2 of this bag, that's something that I would absolutely love to see. One thing that I thought about doing is actually sewing my own straps for this. This bag actually has a harness that is adjustable. So it can go up and down, you can remove it, which is a huge advantage over some other camera bags like the Peak Design bags or the Peter McKinnon bags where you, you can't adjust the up and down. And so if you're a small torso person, the 35 liter Peter McKinnon bag is just not gonna work for you. Going with something like this that's adjustable, try it on in the store because I guarantee you if you set it to like the small size or if you're a big person, set it to the large size, you'll be able to get a little bit more of a snug, a little bit more of, of a conforming fit to your body. If you wanna see any of the gear, any of the extras, any of the accessories that I pulled out of my camera bag, all of that is gonna be linked in the description below, or at least the ones that are available on the internet because not all those things are fully available. Some of them are custom pieces that I've done myself. But if you enjoyed this video, go ahead, leave a comment, hit the like button, and if you do, I'll see you in the next one.